So Karibuni, um, our friends from Nairobi, our friends from the region who have joined us for today. We are concluding a, um, a study that uh, will uh, hear more about it from, uh, uh, from the various people who are speaking today. Um, and then later on have a launch of a special journal that was produced together in collaboration with the University of Dar es Salaam um, on the African Review. The center is really a hub where we, um, we like um, challenging ourselves um, mostly on the issues of security governance. Um, we are based in Nairobi, been existing from 2007. And um, um, as, as the program says, we are going to have an overview of the project which will be done by um, Tumaru Tere, who is the center's uh, director. This is a project that started three years ago. Um, and uh, it's the project that has been, uh, we've worked together with several key partners. Um, first, um, the International Development Research Center in helping us um, uh, give us the support to bring together the researchers but also to build the capacity to actually undertake this research. For that, we are very, very grateful um, and you read alone hear more from, uh, from Ramata who is here. So very briefly, uh, the project uh, that where we are launching the Special Journal issue uh, was conceived basically as um, as, as, as a study that sought to address, as a project, basically the centerpiece of the study in the four East African countries, uh, Rwanda, Tanzania, Uganda, and Kenya. And the idea was to address two key, two key questions with regard, or two key gaps with regard to questions of security. The first major gap that this study, study and project sought to address was what we recognized as a research gap and a scholarly gap that tended to look at security only from the perspective of security institutions and in that, uh, in that regard state security institutions. So most of the con research tended to look at police, military, and tended to see any research, any research problem linked to security as one that requiring thinking more on how to strengthen or improve these institutions. The second gap that this study wanted to address had to do with the policy. It sought to look at, to, uh, to inform policy discussions that again tended to say, when you look at poor urban neighborhoods, which is what we were standing, uh, the, the research, the, the gap that existed was the absence of police and therefore we needed to deploy more police. The other innovation that uh, gained in this study was the recognition that a lot of the studies on security and conversations about security tended to be um, largely about top and what the uh, leadership is doing, what the state is doing, and very rarely did these studies actually look at very local governance. And in that we chose poor, uh, uh, four urban centers and specifically looked at poor urban areas and went to look at how people themselves organize themselves, manage themselves to actually generate uh, better security outcomes in their own neighborhood. The other innovation that this study um, uh, recognized and sought to bring into this is the recognition that most of the studies in our part of the world um, are focused at the national level. Indeed, when you look at most of the studies that looks at conflict uh, from a cross-regional perspective, from a continental perspective, they are largely done by scholars and researchers from the West. So the rest of the African scholars largely only focus on what is happening on in their own countries. But we are saying if we are going to start generating knowledge that is located in the global south, it's very important that we design and undertake studies that actually cross the boundaries. One of the very interesting findings that have emerged from all these four studies in all these four countries uh, in the four sites in poor urban areas is that there is a space for community organizing in all the four countries. The, the other finding, the other uh, cross-cutting finding that emerges from this um, uh, study is that um, contrary to, me, to some of the beliefs, the state is not absent. Um, the state might not be there in the way that the state is expected, but nevertheless, the state is always there uh, in the form of a certain form of um, ultimate, as an ultimate guarantor 
of security to the community. The other finding uh, that emerges from this is that in all the four places we found that um, people's view of security uh, is quite similar to that of this, the public police or the police when it comes to the forms of surveillance. In all the places people invest in, the, in certain forms of surveillance. So people people uh, uh, hire, uh, hire uh, um, young people to patrol in the foyer, in all the four uh, countries that we studied, um, and they want a certain presence. It is also a psychological way of, uh, of making themselves feel secure that we have actually an extra eye that is watching. So surveillance technologies, uh, surveillance approaches seems to be quite common even where people actually um, are organizing their own security. The other finding that um, as a man from the study is that these security forms of, these organizing for security are, are not just about security. In some of the places we've seen these forms of organizing starting to think about livelihoods. We recognize these young people are getting into crimes and why are they getting into crimes? There's a problem with the livelihoods and therefore are beginning to think that beyond, beyond uh, uh, securing the neighborhood, um, a kind of, there's, there's need for a kind of investment in improving the community itself um, if you have to address security concerns. The other issue arising out of all this is that this is actually not um, uh, these, these areas are not actually destitute areas. In all these places, people have capacities, people have financial resources, people have information, people have knowledge on actually what can be done better to improve their own community. So in all the four cases, we found that what they, they don't need charity in these places. They don't need sympathy in these places. What they need is an understanding of what capacities they have and the need for policy makers and researchers to actually build on those existing capacities in those particular areas. IDRC, the uh, International Development Resource Center of Canada, is a um, public institution. Uh, it's a crown institution, which is a kind of autonomous institution but funded by the government of Canada and is one of the key pillars of the, um, the Canada uh, Development Aid. Uh, the specificity of IDRC is really to support research for development. So as such, we really uh, work with um, researchers um, in the global south uh, to help them find solutions for their de uh, development uh, challenges. Um, that is why um, I think it's very, um, we were very pleased to, uh, to collaborate with um, CRIPS in this, uh, in this project. I think it's very important also to note um, the focus on cities, is, uh, urban city settings is very important in this continent, um, which is um, really uh, growing fast. The cities are growing very fast with uh, so many challenges and security is one of the key challenges. So it's very important for us to understand how can we uh, uh, make sure that uh, citizens are, uh, feel safe and also are safe. So I think uh, for that this was um, for us a great pleasure to, to fund this research um, and we think uh, it will help to um, find, to su suggest some su solution, actionable solution to uh, the security issues in um, the region, but not only the region, in the continent. Um, the way IDSC work, we, we, we really select projects that have the potential to, to be, uh, you know, um, to have impact at scale. The other thing that also IDSC is very um, uh, happy to, um, to get involved in, and I think the project have demonstrated, is to really support researchers, uh, and you mentioned in your nod that um, our continent is not in this region, but our continent, the voice of our continent is very low uh, with regard to sound research. And that is why I think uh, we also in IDRC want to support researchers to really help them to raise their voice and to uh, get involved in a debate uh, to contribute to, to, to to uh, a critical debate in the, um, in the development um, or the research arena, but also to provide solutions to the issues that you are facing uh, for this context in security. So in this juncture, I want to introduce um, 
the actual people who did the study. I'm Asima Godfrey. Um, um, I work at Makere University. Kama Dixon. I work in the same place. Uh, we undertook this research in uh, two uh, samples. Yohana Maria Mosei uh, and Chifumbera. These are low-income uh, slum areas where we looked at uh, alternative uh, community-led um, security mechanisms. I'm Eric Indushabande. Um, <coughs> I'm Pacific Bariuta. I'm an independent researcher, but uh, by the time of uh, starting this uh, research, I was working with the Institute of Research and Dialogue for Peace, who is uh, leaded by, led by Dr. Eric Ndushavandi. What uh, Dr. Motoma brought to us is to ask ourselves how communities are contributing in this, in terms of awareness and leading uh, security. My three-year engagement in this project, I think for me really I can describe it in two different ways. First is uh, in terms of uh, knowledge. To me this has been a very important uh, uh, academic avenue which has essentially exposed me to issues that maybe I knew or I just had tend to overlook them. Secondly, this engagement has allowed me to expand my academic networks. Name is Eva Ayara and um, I did the study in Kenya together with Sheila Kenya was my colleague back then but she's moved on to, to do her masters at King's College. That is uh, two uh uh, things that I'd like to, to, to take note of. One was how we conceptualize the idea of community-led security mechanisms. So in this study, we were looking specifically at uh, groups that are voluntary and which arise as a self-help uh, measure to respond to security challenges in the community. We also saw that these are groups that try to act within the law and they use uh, non-coercive and non-adversarial uh, approaches to conflict uh, or, or response to violence and crime. Now the other uh, methodological uh, aspect that was applied in the study was the node of governance conceptual framework and the node of governance looks at the various actors and networks that are involved in, in a particular uh, theme, and in this area, uh, in this regard, we are looking at security and looking at how the various uh, actors uh, are existing differently but are networked. This, uh, the African Review, is a journal published by the Department of Political Science and Public Administration of the University of Dar es Salaam. Editorial boards normally have two main challenges to get quality articles and to get funding to be able to produce the journal. We have solid original research articles and we have, I think through the IDRC, we had the money to produce the journal. Another issue with regard to this uh, particular volume is related to what they call international journals. I think it is very, very international in that we have four countries with people contributing from these four countries. So it is very international. We are thankful for all the, those who contributed to the realization of this uh, volume. Thank you. So on account to what? Do you all of us count? I have no idea how to do these things. So please, <laughs> you can hurrah, you can shout, you can count. <laughs> so <laughs> on something. Okay. <laughs> something. Oh, crap. I want to be famous. I want to have lots and lots of money. Soar above the clouds. I want to be free. Um, right at the top, we want to thank IDRC, the International Development Research Center, Canada. 
Um, and of course, Ramata is here representing a big team, but we also started with Njeri Karuru, who was with us. She championed the cause with us right from the start and has since moved to the UN. Um, Martha Mutisi, which uh, Mutuma, you, you mentioned that she wasn't able to be here. I think she's had um, personal issues which uh, she had to tend to, and we please do, do pass our, our kind regards to her on that account. And to Rosemary, I wonder if she's here. The expert reference group, uh, Dr. Eric Dushabandi of Rwanda and Belgium. He straddled, I think, the two places and, and really carried this project through. And even in terms of what you did within Rwanda as we went through, you know, getting it to, to, to people to review as we started and, and right through to the end. And Professor Mohamed Bakari. William, we are counting on you to take our deepest thanks back to him. Um, he has been a very sharp mind, strong supporter right through this process. Our very own Dr. Priska Kamungi. Priska, I never call you doctor, but today I'm happy to say Dr. Priska Kamungi, <laughs> who um, also supported the process in Kenya. I think um, your input uh, right through the process has really been uh, something else. And Professor Simwe, Bona Dixon, Kamukama, we must really specially thank you. And this is because we had to bring in the Uganda situation, we had to bring them in quite late. And the way these two gentlemen picked up the ball, ran with it, and produced something excellent, that is not something we take for granted, and it's not something to be sniffed at. So thank you very much. Uh, William Walwa, he wasn't a doctor then, now he is, uh, was, was a key partner. But we also want you to convey our regards to Alexander Ma Makuliro, Makulilo, I may be a little off on the name, but I remember he was one of the key people we spoke to, Prof Malia. Thank you. You're also on the editorial board. I'm sure, um, like me, several of the other writers, we really appreciated the comments and the support um, in terms of producing the quality of journal that there is. Then, of course, the research team. We were overwhelmed. We slaved at it. We suffered. But here we are standing, Pacific, um, from the Rwanda team. Thank you very much, Pacific. And convey your thanks. Please remember to thank all the people who supported you in getting the work going on the ground. Oh, I thank myself and Sheila. Sheila was a young, uh, she was a junior fellow at Crips, and we'd, we'd carried the work out, the, the data collection um, on the ground, and it was quite intense. And I particularly want to acknowledge Kaka. I don't think he came. Isaac was uh, the young man who, he was sort of like an opinion leader. And of course, Kamau. And then of course, uh, the Crips team. Thank you very much. <laughs>